What's up guys, this is Massey, welcome to another video. In this video I want to talk about oblique asymptote. We already saw horizontal asymptote and vertical asymptote and had many examples regarding finding horizontal asymptotes and vertical asymptotes. But in this video I want to show you some examples regarding finding oblique asymptotes. So first of all, let's see what is oblique asymptote. An oblique asymptote occurs when the polynomial in the numerator is a higher degree than the polynomial in the denominator. And the degree of numerator is higher than the degree of denominator by one. So again, we are dealing with the rational expression. We have a polynomial in the numerator and we have a polynomial in the denominator. So the order of or degree of the polynomial in the numerator is greater than the degree of polynomial in the denominator by one. Let's see some example. The first example, it says, consider the function x squared plus x minus one over x minus one, sketch and analyze this function. So as you see here, the degree of numerator is two and the degree of polynomial in the denominator is one. So first thing I'm gonna do long division, x squared plus x minus one, over x minus 1. x squared divided by x is going to be x, then multiply it, multiply it, then subtract it, x squared minus x squared 0, x minus negative x is going to be 2x, bring it down, negative. 2x divided by x, 2. Then you multiply it, it's going to be 2x minus 2. When you subtract it, it's going to be just 1. So, I can say x squared plus x minus one over x minus one is x plus two plus one over x minus one. So now we need to analyze it. This is gonna give us the equation of the oblique asymptote. So since the degree of numerator is always greater than the degree of denominator by one, we are always dealing with a linear function for oblique asymptote. So equation of the oblique asymptote is x plus two. Then in the denominator here, x minus 1 equals to 0, x equals to 1. So you can say equation of the vertical asymptote is x equals to 1. So we have one oblique asymptote, one vertical asymptote. But there is no horizontal asymptote. So let's graph it. So this one is y equals to x plus two. So when we want to graph it, first thing we do, we need to have the vertical asymptote. Then we need to have the oblique asymptote. It's gonna be something like that. So this is vertical and this is oblique asymptote or sort of slant a asymptote sometimes called. Then let's see if we have x intercept or y intercept. X intercept we have when y is zero. The function is x squared plus x minus one over x minus one equals to zero. So it means that x squared plus x minus one has to be zero. We just try to find out the roots so I'm gonna use the quadratic formula negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a so that's gonna be negative 1 plus minus 1 squared minus 4 1 negative 1 over 2 times 1 so that's gonna be 5 here is going to be 2, so when you calculate it, the roots going to be 
0.6 and negative 1.6. So we have here and here x intercepts. So we have 0.6 and 0, negative 1.6 and 0. So these are the two x intercepts. Let's take a look to the y intercept. For y intercept, x has to be 0. So, function we have is x squared plus x minus 1 over x minus 1. So, that's going to be negative 1 over negative 1, which is going to be 1. So, 0 and 1 is the y intercept, which is going to be in here. Now, let's take a look to the end behavior. We want to see when x approaches positive infinity, the degree of numerator is greater than degree of denominator. So it is going to definitely approach us to positive infinity or negative infinity. I'm talking about f of x. Since both of them are positive, the leading coefficient, it means that when x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity as well. If x approaches negative infinity, that's going to be positive infinity divided by negative infinity. So it is going to be negative infinity. What about around vertical asymptote? x1 plus, it means a slightly greater than 1, 1 minus. So you remember we had, whenever we have a vertical asymptote, we need to find out the end we need to find out the behavior of the function around the vertical asymptote. So we go slightly greater than 1, slightly less than 1. Slightly greater than 1 is going to be something like 1.1, 1.01, or 1.05, something like that. We just sub into the formula to see if it's going to be positive or negative. So when you sub it there, it's going to be positive. So it is going to go to positive infinity. What about 1 minus? That's going to make this one negative. And here, that's going to make it um, positive. So it's going to be y approaches negative infinity. So when you graph it, it's going to be like that. This is one side, the other side is going to be something like that. Because it's going to go to positive infinity when it approaches x equals to 1 from the right hand side. So this is the graph for this function. Let's take a look to another example. Okay, this example is x squared plus x minus 3 over x minus 1. Again, the degree of numerator is greater than the degree of denominator by 1. So we are dealing with both vertical asymptote and oblique asymptote. So right in from the beginning, I'm going to say we need to do long division. So that's going to be x, x squared minus x subtracted. These two cancel out. It's going to be 2x minus 3. 2x minus 2, these two cancels out and it's going to be negative 1. So we have f of x equals to x minus 1 minus 1 over x plus 2. x minus 1, sorry. So I'm going to write it here. x minus 1, subtract 1 over x minus 1. So this one is going to be equation of the oblique asymptote, like the previous example, y equals to x minus 1. So I'm going to write it here. Equation of the oblique asymptote, y equals to x minus 1. And equation of the vertical 
asymptote is x equals to 1. So we have x equals to 1 is the vertical asymptote and here we have oblique asymptote because we need to follow the line y equals to x minus 1 now let's look at the x intercept x intercept is when f of x is 0 so x squared plus x minus 3 over x minus 1 equals to 0 So we have a1, b1, c, negative 3. Then we follow quadratic formula. Which is going to be negative 1 plus minus 13 over 2. So when you use the calculator to find out these two, it is going to be one answer is going to be 1.3 and 0. The other one is going to be negative 2.3 and 0. So these are the x-intercepts. So one of them is going to be 1.3 somewhere here one of them is going to be negative 2.3 now we need to find out y intercept y intercept is going to be when x is 0 so f of x when is the 0 is going to be 0 plus 0 minus 3 over 0 minus 1 which is going to be 3. So 0 and 3 is the y-intercept, which is going to be somewhere here. Now let's take a look to the end behavior. Function is x squared plus x minus 3 over x minus 1. If x approaches positive infinity, like what we had earlier, that's going to go to positive infinity. When x approaches negative infinity, that approaches to negative infinity. When x approaches 1 plus, it is going to go to check that. That's going to be negative infinity. And when x approaches to 1 minus, which means that something is slightly less than 1, y approaches to positive infinity. Now let's go to the graph and sketch it. It's going to be... Something like this for the graph of this function. So when we do long division, if the remainder part is negative, the graph is going to be on these two sides. When the remaining part is positive, it's plus in here. The graph is going to be in the top and bottom. This is just a hint to know where you can graph these kind of rational functions. 
So basically, these are the two examples I had for applic asymptotes. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave me a comment if you have any question. Thank you for watching and have a great day.